to fulfill his dream of becoming a Hollywood star. He had to step into the dark adult world. Yes, yes, I am talking about that Sylvester Stallone who worked as an adult actor for lack of money. How was Stallone's real adult career? What happened was that many girls hated Stallone. What happened to Arnold Schwarzenegger with Stallone in the 80s? Why did some members of Stallone's family secretly come to India? What was Stallone's real secret behind the success of the Rocky character? You will be known everything in this video. So please watch the video till the end. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. Sylvester Guardiandio Stallone, born on July 6, 1946, emerged into the world in the lively neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen within Manhattan, New York City, his spirited mother, Jacqueline Jackie Stallone, boasted a diverse heritage of Breton, French, and Ukrainian Jewish roots, gaining prominence in women's professional wrestling. Francesco Frank Stallone's SR Stallone's father migrated from Gioia del Colo, Italy, in the 1930s. He one of three siblings. Stallone's brother, Frank Stallone Jr., pursued a career in acting and music, while Dante Stallone, from his father's second marriage, shared in the family's journey he had a stepsister, Tony Dalto, born from his mother's subsequent marriage. Stallone's entry into the world faced complication, with forceps used during birth causing unintended nerve damage, resulting in partial paralysis of his lower left facial features. This gave him his distinctive expression and speech during childhood bullying. Stallone found refuge in bodybuilding and acting amid familial shift he experienced a childhood shuttling between foster care and reuniting with his family in Maryland, ultimately settling in Philadelphia with his mother after his parents' divorce. The Stallone family later moved to Washington, D.C., where they pursued entrepreneurial ventures, including a beauty school and a women's gym named Barbella's. Despite his initial birth name, Michael Sylvester Gardillo Stallone, Stallone's father chose Sylvester, and he was affectionately called Binky growing up. However, he later adopted Mike Meikle after being teased as Stinky by schoolmate. His middle name, Gardenzio, derived from the Italian Jod, was often shortened to Enzio. Despite defying expectations, Sylvester Stallone's academic path prepared him for his successful rise in Hollywood. This is a closer look at his journey through academia. Before the age of 13, Stallone's academic career was turbulent due to behavioral issues that resulted in his expulsion from an astounding 14 schools. He passed through schools including Charlotte Hall Military Academy, Abraham Lincoln High School, and Notre Dame Academy College. Um, in 1965, Stallone received a scholarship to the American College of Switzerland, where school productions kindled his passion for acting. In 1967, after coming back to the United States, he enrolled in the University of Miami's theater arts program. His passion for the theater pulled him away from college and into New York City in 1969, even though he was dangerously near to graduating. Later in life, in a heartbreaking turn of events, Stallone's alma mater, the University of Miami recognized his remarkable accomplishments in 1999. The institute recognized Stallone's life experiences and unmatched accomplishment in the acting world by awarding him a Bachelor of Fine Arts, IP degree, a mark of his lasting influence. Lester Stallone's personal life has been marked by significant relationships and family dynamics. Here is a comprehensive overview. Marriages. Sasha Sack's 1974-1985, Stallone tied the knot with actress Sasha Sack in 1974. Together they welcomed two sons into the world, Sage Moonblood, 1976-2012, and Serge Born in 1979. Tragically, Sage passed away at the age of 36 due to heart disease, while Serge lives with autism. Their marriage concluded in 1985. Brigitte Nielsen, 1885-1987, following his first divorce, Stallone entered a brief union with model and actress Brigitte Nielsen in 1985. Despite the attention their marriage garnered, it ended after only two years in 1987. Jennifer Flavin, 1997, presents Stallone's enduring relationship began in 1988 when he met model Jennifer Flavin. 
Though they experienced ups and downs, including a brief separation in 1994, they reconciled and eventually married in 1997. Their bond has since remained strong and they have three daughters together. Sophia born in 1996, Sistine born in 1998, and Scarlett born in 2002. At these wife recent developments. In August 2022, Jennifer Flavin initiated divorce proceedings after 25 years of marriage to Stallone. However, they reconciled a month later with Stallone expressing a renewed commitment to spending quality time with his family. Family connections. Frank Stallone, Sylvester's younger brother. Frank is a talented actor and musician who has collaborated with Sylvester on various projects, including the Rocky and Rambo franchises. Their relationship appears supportive, with Sylvester often attending Frank's performances and publicly commending his work. Tony Ann Felitti, Sylvester's half-sister from his mother's second marriage. Tony Ann Felitti pursued acting briefly, appearing in the film The Appointment as Tony and Dalto. Sadly, she passed away in 2012 after battling lung cancer. Dante Stallone, Sylvester's half-brother Dante, has a significant age gap of 50 years between them, and little is known about their relationship. Carla Stallone, another half-sister of Sylvester, details about his relationship with Carla are scarce. Additionally, Stallone shared a close friendship with Joe Spinell, although they experienced a falling out during the filming of their final collaboration. Nighthawks, in 1981, Spinell passed away in 1989. It wasn't easy for Stallone to break into the, the film industry. Early Step Stallone's interest in acting bloom during his time at the American College of Switzerland. He returned to the U.S. to study drama at the University of Miami, but dropped out just shy of graduation to pursue acting in New York City. Early in his stardom, Stallone had different names such as Mike Stallone. In 1969, while at the University of Miami, he adopted the stage name Sylvester E. Stallone. While Sylvester Stallone's first film credit was in an adult film titled The Party at Kitty, and Studs later renamed The Italian Stallion in 1970. This wouldn't be considered his true career film due to its nature. His first significant film role was in The Lords of Flatbush in 1974. Here's the story of how he got it. Hustle and grit, early struggles, despite appearing in several uncredited roles in the early 70s, Stallone faced rejection and financial difficulties. He even took a doorman job at a theater to make ends meet. Writing opportunity, he saw an ad for the script The Lords of Flatbush seeking someone who understood the Brooklyn Italian experience. Recognizing his own background, he decided to audition even though the role was initially offered to another actor, um, impressing the director. Stallone convinced the director, Marty Davidson, of his passion and understanding of the story. He even agreed to work as a production assistant for free to be on set. Landing the role, his dedication and raw talent impressed Davidson, who eventually offered him the lead role of Stanley Rosiello. Stallone even wrote additional dialogue for his character, showcasing his writing skills, significance of The Lords of Flatbush, first credited role. This marks Stallone's first credited film role with significant screen time and dialogue, acting potential while the film itself wasn't a major commercial success. It showcased Stallone's acting chops and ability to portray relatable characters. Opening doors the film led to further opportunities, including a role in Rocky 1976, which catapulted him to international stardom. Before Sylvester Stallone made it big, he was like everybody else a struggling actor looking for any job to pay the bills. At only 24 years of age, it appeared all of his dreams had come true when Stallone was offered the lead in a movie. After reading the script, it soon became clear that this wasn't the dream role he was hoping for. The film was called The Party at Kitty and Studs and is a low-budget softcore porno from 1970. It offered the Italian stallion his first shot at being on the big screen and while myth and legend have carried the skin, flick into the realm of hardcore. The truth is this film is merely a document of Stallone's acting career. At the end of the 60s, one of the most sexually liberated eras of modern history, the art of pornography was still a dirty little secret. Rarely peeping its head into the mainstream, 
The business was far from as lucrative as it is today. However, it was still very much considered an art form, so one can't be too judgmental of Stallone's decision to jump on board with the project. Films like Deep Throat had put porn in the newspapers, but otherwise. The scene was largely restricted to an underground environment. It means that a film like this was unlikely to find any mass distribution and would likely have been confined to landfill had Stallone's career not taken off. As such, the tepid storyline of Kitty and Stallone as stud, which includes some very light bondage, a dinner party, and some deeply unerotic lovemaking, Stallone naturally wasn't a fan of the film, the script in particular, was a personal point of disgust for him, but considering he was literally living in a bus station at the time, there was no other option. It was either do that movie or rob someone because I was at the end, at the very end of my rope, he told Playboy in 1978. Instead of doing something desperate, I worked two days for $200 and got myself out of the bus station. After Stallone's career shot off into stardom, the makers of the party at Kitty and Studs thought they had a winning lottery ticket and cashed in. They released the film as Italian Stallion, a nod to Rocky's nickname in the films, but yet it fell flat once more. The film has since been floating around the internet in various guises, including some which include inserted hardcore scenes featuring actors which look like Stallone, don't be fooled. 1978 re-release with famed porn director Gail Palmer leading the affair, she confirms, that everything you ever wanted to see of Sylvester Stallone can be seen in this new X-rated movie. Um, it's an essential watch and confirms everything you ever thought about 70s porn. In February 2001, Sylvester Stallone encountered legal issues when Margie Carr, an exotic dancer, filed a lawsuit alleging rape at a Santa Monica fitness center in February 2000. Stallone's legal representative refuted the accusation, claiming that Carr had sold her story to Globe magazine before initiating the lawsuit. In 2000, A7, Australian customs officials discovered 48 vials of the synthetic human growth hormone Gintropin in Stallone's luggage. Stallone later pleaded guilty to two charges of possessing a controlled substance during a court hearing on May 15, 2013. It was revealed that Stallone had paid a $2 million lump sum settlement in addition to monthly payments and a trust for psychiatric and medical expenses. To his half-sister Tony Ann Felitti in 1987, Felitti had threatened to file a lawsuit accusing Stallone of abuse. Stallone and Filetti's mother refuted the allegation. Describing Filetti as a drug addict and accusing her of blackmail, Filetti's son supported her claims uh, in 2016. A report from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department surfaced, alleging a sexual assault by Stallone against a 16-year-old girl in 1986 during the filming of a movie in Las Vegas. Stallone's representative denied the allegation and his ex-wife, Brigitte Nielsen, and co-star David Mendenhall defended him, providing alibis for the time of the purported assault in November 2017. Another woman accused Stallone of sexually assaulting her at a Santa Monica office in the early 1990s. Stallone denied the claim, and his attorney revealed that the accuser had initially reported the incident to an entertainment website, which opted not to publish the story. Stallone's legal team presented witnesses who contradicted the allegations. In June 2018, the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office confirmed an investigation into the case. However, in October 2018, they opted not to charge Stallone, citing a lack of witness corroboration. In response, Stallone filed a police report against the accuser for making false statements on an official document. Hollywood two action superstars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone had a massive rivalry during the 1980s, and it has now continued in the strangest way, despite the two burying the hatchet. Both Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone ruled the box office with their action films. The two stars were often pitted against each other. Each of the actors cemented their name as one of the greatest action icons of all time by headlining some of the most popular movies and franchises in a similar time frame. Schwarzenegger became famous for roles in Predator, Conan the Barbarian, and The Terminator during the 80s, while Stallone reached fame with the Rocky and Rambo franchises. Years later, Schwarzenegger has admitted that he went ahead 
to head in a heated rivalry against actor and enemy Sylvester Stallone. I always need an enemy, Schwarzenegger, age 75, revealed during his Netflix documentary. Arnold, every time he came out with a movie, like Rambo II, I had to figure out a way of now outdoing that. Schwarzenegger worked on Commando in 1985. Soon after Stallone's Rambo, I released. We were incredibly antagonistic. We couldn't even stand to be in the same room. People had to separate us. Stallone, age 76, Stallone compared their rivalry to Ali versus Frazier, but called himself the underdog who got my ass kicked constantly. According to Stallone, Schwarzenegger typically emerged from his cinematic exploits with barely a scratch. Arnold started to come unstronger. We were great warriors that are traveling the same course. There was only room for one of us. Stallone confessed. We were competing about everything. Schwarzenegger admitted, the body being ripped and oiled up. Who is more vicious? Who is more tough? Who uses bigger knives? Who uses bigger guns? Stallone admitted that despite the stiff competition, his films eventually got knocked out by Schwarzenegger at the box office. Over the years, Sylvester Stallone's spiritual path has experienced major changes. After being raised in a strict Catholic upbringing and being baptized at an early age, Stallone began to stray from his faith when his acting career took off his daughter's serious sickness. In 1996 marked a significant turning point in his life forcing him to rediscover and re-embrace his Catholic heritage. He credited his comeback to a strong sense of spiritual conviction and putting his faith in God when he became a devout Catholic again at the end of 2006. In 2010, he said to GQ magazine, I think a lot about the soul of man. I'm fairly spiritual. I'm not an atheist by any means. Despite my Catholic baptism, I don't attend a formal church. I'm not against it at all. I believe that there are some excellent life lessons and insightful nuggets of information in there. The degree of suffering that results is the opposite. In 2013, Sylvester Stallone reportedly visited Haridwar to perform a shroud ceremony for his deceased son. Sage, initially believed to have died from a drug overdose in 2012, it was later revealed that Sage had suffered a heart attack at the age of 36, with his body discovered in his Los Angeles apartment. Salone seeking solace, shared with a Rishikesh based Vedic scholar that he still sensed a connection with his departed son. The scholar suggested conducting a puja for sages, prompting the Hollywood actor to discreetly send a family member to perform the ritual based on the scholar's advice to avoid media attention. The family, including Salone's half brother Michael, his wife, and two others, secretly traveled to Count Call. Haridwar, under the guidance of Pratik Mishrapuri, Mishrapuri, and astrologer, and Stallone's acquaintance, revealed that the family performed the Tithi Shroud, a Hindu ritual for those who have passed away due to accidents or murder, concerned about paparathi. They swiftly returned to Philadelphia after completing the ceremony. Stallone's grief led him to explore unconventional means of communication with his late son, including attempts at seances. He struggled to come to terms with Sage's untimely death and sought guidance from Mishra Puri, who was visiting Los Angeles at the time. Stallone, introduced to the Hindu writer Shrad by Mishra Puri, acknowledged the difficulty of the process, but expressed a deep desire to connect with his departed son. Mishra Puri highlighted the family's intention to keep the affair private, arranging inconspicuous accommodations for them. Additionally, after Sage's shroud, Michael conducted a ceremony for their late sister, Tony Ann, who had passed away in 2012 at the age of 48. He decided that he would make a career in acting, become an actor, and then he moved to New York. He came here and started auditioning to fulfill his dream. He started meeting people, go to the production office and convince people to stand in line, um, showing his profile. All this continues. Despite being under a lot of pressure, there were no significant results. Stallone was writing the script, so he thought, if nothing happens from here, if something happens through the script, there is an investment opportunity. So he tried that, wrote many scripts, uh, met producers, and showed them. But people didn't like his work. I got rejected everywhere, acting as well as writing. 
After many years, he started acting in small roles around 1970 to 75, but did not appear in any good roles. He was not getting any benefit in acting. I mean, I wasn't getting enough money. My career wasn't progressing. Still, you know, he did this work for four or five years due to scarcity. Financially, we were slowly falling apart. I had to do something to survive and hope that one day I will get a chance to come to Hollywood and people will see me. He also got married at that time and after marriage, the responsibilities and pressure increased and he started working harder. Over time, Stallone was financially broke his right money was not coming from anywhere. There came a time when there was no money for food. He could not even feed his family twice a day, but he continued to fight. A man breaks, no matter how strong he is, he is now his own man. Stallone worked hard, was very desperate for money. For food forced to steal his wife's jewelry and sell it in the market, there came a day when I had to sleep in a bus station in New York for three days. He had a dog that he loved very much and could not take care of. He did not have enough money to feed the dog properly, so he prepared to sell it. He approached a liquor store and pleaded with everyone that he needed money. Someone keep this dog. A man is ready. The man paid $25 for the dog. He was dog-eared. Stallone sold his dog crying. A few days later, he read somewhere that soft adult films require boys Stallone was at a point where he had two options. Either he has to start stealing money for his family or start working in adult films and earn some money from there to feed the family properly, choose adult photos. What came for and what circumstances and fate did after some days, one day he saw a crowd in the street, people gathered, and as he approached, he saw that they were watching something. Outside the shop, inside the TV, Dallas saw a boxing match going on. This lead to a fight between Muhammad Ali and Wapner. Muhammad Ali hit Wapner 25 times in a row, but Wapner did not give up. They are standing up again and again to compete. Seeing this, Styron had an idea. Either he has to start stealing money for his family or start working in adult films and earn some money from there to feed the family properly. Choose adult photos, what came for and what circumstances and fate did. After some days, one day he saw a crowd in the street, people gathered and as he approached, he saw that they were watching something. Outside the shop, inside the TV, Stylo saw a boxing match going on. This lead to a fight between Muhammad Ali and Wapner. Muhammad Ali hit Wapner 25 times in a row, but Wapner did not give up. They are standing up again and again to compete. Seeing this, Styron had an idea. He immediately went home and started writing a new script. He continued to write continuously for 24 hours. I completed the script and named it Rocky. He realized that the script could change my life. With this script, he started meeting the producers again. I started going to the production office and everyone rejected me for what I wrote. But I realized that this is not an ordinary script and the worst thing in the world is to be told that your work is not good. It will not spoil your work. You will not be useless. Carefully understand it happens to you and every human being. You work hard, create something and do something and then someone or everyone tells you that you know nothing. You don't do your job right and the biggest mistake is that most people admit it. Stallone moves on, meet people. Finally, he found the maker. The producer offered $100,000 for the script. Just think of the man who had to sleep at the bus station for three days. For $25, he had to sell the dog he loved more than life. He had to sell his wife's jewelry. He worked for a living. Someone is giving him $100,000. He had one condition for the producers. I will give my script only if I play the lead role in this. Producer Bolin says it's not possible. You take back your script and listen. You're a writer, not trying to be a hero. And your face is strange. Your words are not clear. I won't give away the script, Stallone said. Because he wasn't thinking near, he was thinking far. But one thing is certain. The producer was found with great difficulty. Anyone else with this script could have taken the money, but Stallone didn't. A few days later, the producer called Stallone's home. He said, bro, I will give you some more money. Give me the script give up stubbornness. Salone said, no, sir, we'll give the script only if you take me as the hero. As the process progressed, the producers offered up to $4 million, but Stallone's only condition was if the film was made from this script. I will be the only hero. Finally, the producer agreed, but he also made a strange condition. You have no problem taking Nebo as a hero. 
but you will get only $35,000 to loan told the producer when do I start then came the film Rocky and it set the market on fire super duper himself won three Oscars Shaylin was nominated for an Oscar for Best Actor for his base film, base editing, and base direct. Stallone became an overnight superstar in Hollywood. Stallone let the world know that the night was too long. And that was one of the things I loved about Stallone. The money he got was $35,000. Any common man could have put the money to good use. But Stallone went to a liquor store where he sold his dog. He had spent three days there trying to find the person to whom he had sold the dog. When the man arrived, Stallone told him, brother, I did it because I had to. I had no money. Dogs are my life. You give me back this dog. I'll give you $100. But the man in front did not agree. He again said, I will give you $200. But he also refused. He offered $300, $400, or $500, and $1,000. But the man refused. He refused. See, Stallone gave me $15,000. He sold for $25 and bought for $15,000. How much he loved, he renowned for embracing physically demanding roles and demonstrating an admirable willingness to undertake the majority of his own stunts. Sylvester Stallone has faced numerous injuries throughout his illustrious acting career. One memorable incident occurred during the filming of Escape to Victory, where he broke a finger while attempting to block a penalty kick from soccer legend Pele. In another instance, for a scene in Rocky IV, Stallone directed Dolph Lundgren to hit me as hard as you can in the chest, resulting in a four-day stay in intensive care at St. John's Hospital. Reflecting on the episode, Stallone candidly admitted, it's foolish. Notably, while shooting a fight sequence with Stone Cold, Steve Austin for The Expendables, Stallone sustained a neck injury that necessitated the insertion of a metal plate. This once again underscores Stallone's commitment to realistic and intense action sequence, even at the cost of personal risk and physical well-being. Sylvester Stallone's story is one of resilience, perseverance, and redemption. His journey from obscurity to superstardom serves as an inspiration to many, showcasing the power of determination, talent, and unwavering belief in oneself. Despite the obstacles he faced, Stallone emerged as one of Hollywood's most enduring and beloved figures, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire generations. We hope you found this journey through Stallone's life insightful and inspiring. Thank you for joining us and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay inspired and keep chasing your dreams.